Hi guys. Welcome to video four out of five of Your Sound May Vary, the five minute wise track swapping challenge. This is the cleanup video. We're going to look at things that were good but could be better because everything is good but could be better, isn't it? Uh, of our five minute challenge. And we're going to detail them out. We're going to redo it kind of in fast forward but under less pressure, not under the gun, so that you'll be able to grab wise and do the things that you need to do, not just fast and fun, uh, but with more of the functionality that you're after and a little bit more uh, right. Now, what I've found is there, there are a lot of ways to do things in life and especially in wise. So if you experts, you YouTubers out there have better ways of doing these things, uh, your comments and your corrections are welcome. What was good? What was good about what we did in the five minute challenge success? We got uh, tracks interactively switching. We did it. What could have gone better? Well, we used some sloppy naming because we were in a hurry. Our pieces didn't loop. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. The reason for that is music segments have a kind of looping functionality, but it's not what we're looking for here. Each music segment actually has to be nested in a music playlist. And that's where infinite loops, loops happen. So we're going to redo that. Uh, thing three, it didn't play from the Mackie controller or whatever MIDI controller you might have. And the reason for that is because controller sessions don't seem to like to set switches. And finally, we needed some start and stop functionality just to make the thing completely perfect. And we'll go right into Wise. I just opened up the... Uh, uh, I just typed in Cosmic Highway Cleanup number two, and let's go. So once again, the first thing we're going to do is create a music switch container, just like we did before, and drag our recordings into it. Now what we're going to do that's different is, each one we're going to create a parent, which is a music playlist container, because the segments they appear as segments. The segments don't loop. The switch containers do. So once again, what we're doing, just to show you, is that this is a segment. We right-click it, New Parent. We create a music playlist container. We name it after that. And you can see now that you have the segment sitting inside a playlist container. Let's do that to the rest of them. Okay, we did it. Now, let's create our switches, as we did before, but this time let's name them a little more carefully. Done. So now let's go back and map the switches to the uh, music switch container in such a way that uh, it knows what to do when it gets a switch. Remember, this means that you have to look at it in a different layout. Interactive music, boom. What? Oh, that's just there. Okay. Because you need that switch container association editor to show up. Let's just do the same thing that we did before. And you can see how that could get confusing if we hadn't done the careful naming. When you play this playlist, it's actually not going to play anything until you tell it what goes into the sequence. So you see here, there's a sequence with nothing in it. Let's put that segment into that sequence. And now, when the playlist is called, it will know what to play. Notice? It does play. The other one, which hasn't had that operation done on it, doesn't know what to play until you drag jazz into the sequence and hit play. So that worked. So let's do that to the rest of them. Now let's make sure that everything loops by taking this loop count and moving it down to zero, which equals infinity. How about that? They're so enlightened to know that zero and infinity are the same thing. Doing that to all of them.
Now let's go back to the switch group and, as we did before, alter the transitions. Okay, that should give us a working project that we should be able to operate from down here. Let's see if it does. Uh, we'll click on the big one, we'll pin it, play. Sounds good. So let's get into what it takes to make the switches get fired from the MIDI controller. Now the MIDI controller is going to be really good. A controller session is really good at firing off events. An event can contain a set switch command. So let's create six little events, each of which has a set switch command. Here's how we do it. Events new child, set switch. So I just named all the events and in each one I'm going to set which switch get, I'm going to set a switch. Now the way that you bring the switch there is you use a game sync and you find the right one that you like and drag it in. So back to event, jazz, Back to game syncs, drag the jazz switch to which one gets set. I'll do that for the rest of them. Okay, now that that's done, we're going to take our controller session, which happens under sessions, controller surface session. We're going to learn, or we're going to uh, do a uh, play an event, and that event sits in the, it's a little hard to read, isn't it? But we'll get to it. Events default unit, we'll start with chip, and it's going to set that event. And we'll learn by clicking learn and clicking the MIDI button. There it is. Now we'll take this and just control C, control V, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll set the rest of them up. Chip Jazz Movie Punk Quartet Southern. We'll do the bindings. Chip Jazz Movie Punk Quartet Southern. Then let's set up a play and stop command real quick. Hitting the play button. And that will play the interactive music hierarchy, the big one. Okay. And we'll add one more. Learn stop and that will stop the same thing, the big one. Okay, let's see if we got it. Play. We did it. We did everything but stop, learn, stop. We did it, and now you can do it. So watch the next short conclusion video to unscatter some of these thoughts, and then uh, give it a try yourself. Shoot it, post your videos, link me up to them, because now your sound may vary. Let's hear that intro as an outro. We should play it backwards as an outro.